Quote, Valve weighed in with some scaremongering regarding Steam, while popular YouTuber Gardner Bryant, that's me, the Linux gamer, posted a doom and gloom video. Doom and gloom? Doom and gloom, Brian, really? I think you mean doom and glee. I'm a gleeful person, right? Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite super helpful YouTuber, Gardner, the Linux Gamer. This video is brought to you by the 121 awesome people supporting me on Patreon, including the support of Matthew Irvin. Matthew, your support is truly humbling. Before we get started, I just wanted to say I'm doing this full time now and I'm trying my damnedest to, to make some quality here content. So if you believe in what I do, you can hit that like button. You can also hit that subscribe button to stay up to date. Maybe if YouTube decides it wants to uh, to keep you informed about my latest videos. Uh, I'm also now on LBRY or library, uh, depending on how you pronounce it. So go check it out. LBRY.TV, I believe beta.lbry.tv. Holy crap, this week has been probably the craziest week in terms of like Linux news that has happened in a long, long time. Um, yeah, it's been insane. So <laughs> let's talk about what's actually gone down. So if you missed my previous videos, I'm just gonna give you a quick synopsis. Basically what happened was Canonical announced that they were um, removing 32-bit support from Ubuntu 19.10. Then Valve came out on Twitter and said, hey, uh, we're not going to support uh, Ubuntu 19.10 if that's the case. And then, you know, articles were written and feelings were hurt and strong opinions were proclaimed loudly upon the internet. And then Canonical decided, hey, we're going to change, uh, we're going to take a more conservative tack on this. And, uh, then more articles were written and more feelings were hurt and more opinions were screamed loudly out onto the interwebs. And uh, finally, it seems like we have come to a place of sanity. <laughs> this is such an interesting, interesting thing because so many people have so many different op opinions and feelings and thoughts and, and, uh, and some, of them, some of them are stronger than others, I have to admit. But um, it seems like uh, we as a Linux community are stronger for this. And I say that because honestly, like it takes a lot for a company to, or, or, or a group of developers to, to listen to what people have to say and to admit they were wrong and make the right choice. And uh, I think that's what happened here. So let's get into like the details here. So on the 24th, which was, um, on uh, Monday for, for those of you, um, not in the know. <laughs> Those of you who are bad at dates, the 24th was Monday, June uh, 24th, 2019. Canonical said, essentially, we were wrong. They said, uh, quote, thanks to the huge amount of feedback this weekend from gamers, Ubuntu Studio, and the wine community, we are changing our plan and building select 32-bit i386 packages for Ubuntu 19.10 and 20.04 LTS. Now that's great news for gamers. That's great news for Steam since Steam relies on uh, a few low level system 32 bit libs. That's really important. And for games that aren't on Steam as well. Now Ubuntu and Canonical in this blog post went on to say, quote, we will work with the Wine, Ubuntu Studio, and gaming communities to use container technology to address the ultimate end of 32-bit libraries. It should stay possible to run older applications on newer versions of Ubuntu. Okay, that's fine. Then they said, there is real risk to anybody who is running a body of software that gets little testing. Uh, the fact that most 32-bit x86 applications are hardly used at all, that means that fewer eyeballs and there's more bugs. Wow, I read that completely wrong, but you understand the gist of it. <laughs> and to be quite honest, I don't think it's unreasonable to want to remove 32-bit support from uh, Ubuntu. They want to end of life the i386 architecture because it is old. And like they said, most of the 32-bit packages are hardly used at all. And you know, that makes sense. But their original approach to um, wholesale end of life of i386 in Ubuntu 19.10, just did not make sense the way they wanted to do it, especially with the 32-bit libs that are used often. Just uh, ending those completely just did not make sense. And I'm glad that they've realized this after, you know, we as a community kind of said, hey, wait a minute, you're the most popular distribution in the entire effing world and you're going to remove legacy support, essentially. Now, there are people who have argued and, and left comments and said, you know, they weren't ending support for 32-bit. You can containerize all this stuff, but really, like, 
Ubuntu is the largest distro in the entire world. And to expect newbies, and newbies use Ubuntu a lot, to expect them to know how to, to containerize stuff or to like, you know, do any of that extra stuff just makes Linux gaming that much harder. And it's one of the biggest issues that we would have faced until like there was some other better option. Now, I think that it's a good thing that Ubuntu, uh, the canonical team, uh, realized that what they were proposing was a mistake, but not everyone was of the same persuasion. <laughs> Quote, having an open mind and admitting that you're wrong is a noble quality. Those that are stubborn and continue with bad ideas just to save face are very foolish. With all that said, sometimes you have to stick with your decisions, despite negative feedback, because you know they are right. Being indecisive or wishy-washy in an effort to quash negativity can make you look weak, and canonical looks very weak today. Fire. Fire, Brian. That's fire. Oh my god, that's Brian Fajoli from uh, from Beta News. Uh, I've, I, I have met Brian. He's a nice dude. I really like him. Uh, I met him at System76 a couple years back. And he's a great guy. And he goes on to mention me in his article. And I had to talk about it because I think it's really funny. Quote, Not to mention, gamers were up in arms as some of their precious games would stop working. Uh, some, you mean most, Brian, most of the games on Steam would stop working. Quote, Valve weighed in with some scaremongering regarding Steam, while popular YouTuber Gardner Brian, that's me, the Linux gamer, posted a doom and gloom video. Doom and gloom, Brian, really? I think you mean doom and glee. I'm a gleeful person, right? Maybe it was doom and doom. Yeah, maybe it was that. I don't know. Quote, sadly, this propaganda seemed to work as Canonical has backpedaled on its plans. In an apologetic toned blog post, Canonical lays out new plans, which it hopes will appease gamers and other crazy 32-bit lovers. Meh. I mean, not, it's not what I got out of that statement, but I guess you did. You do you, man. Anyway, no hard feelings, Brian. I thought it was funny. Uh, high five? High five, bro. Agree to disagree. Anyway. Let's get on to the meat of this video. I just wanted to talk about that because I thought it was awesome. Ah, <laughs> oh, God, I have too much fun with this. So anyway, Valve have posted an official response to this matter, and I thought it was a fascinating read, and I thought it was worthy of your guys' attention. So uh, if you haven't read it, let's go over it together. If you have read it, click that like button. Here, share this video with your friends. Quote, Steam already bundles a lot of dependencies needed by 32-bit games, but it currently relies on some key components being available on the host system, a 32-bit glibc, ELF loader, Mesa, and NVIDIA graphics driver libraries, just to name a few. We've been investigating ways to avoid these system-level dependencies for a while by looking into light containerization and other approaches. The announced changes to Ubuntu would have required us to complete such a system in the 19.10 release time frame as it would be required there to maintain functionality without requiring users to reinstall Steam through another method. In response to the concerns raised by ourselves and the wider community, the Ubuntu project recently discussed a more conservative approach wherein a selection of 32-bit libraries would still be available on the host system through at least 20.04 LTS. We're not particularly excited about the removal of any existing functionality, but such a change to the plan is extremely welcome and will allow us to continue to work towards improvements in the Steam distribution model without causing new headaches for users. Given this new information we have on this new approach so far, it seems likely that we will be able to continue to officially support Steam on Ubuntu. And I think that this is great news for Steam and for Ubuntu and for us gamers, right? First of all, it gives Steam enough time to actually like create a solution to preserve 32-bit games uh, going forward. And it also gives Ubuntu and gamers the ability to game on Ubuntu through the LTS support of 2004, which theoretically will have support until 2025. Now, these are uh, this is a limited selection of libraries. This isn't like they're publishing uh, all of the uh, the libs that are hardly ever used, as they said. This is like the 32-bit the libs that are still required by many applications, not just Steam, but all the rest of the games that you have uh, through 
any number of other platforms. It means that Ubuntu will stay a relevant distribution instead of falling to obscurity in the desktop space and just being used by by servers essentially. And maybe that's what they're going for. I honestly don't know, but at this point, I think that this is a good move on their part. And there might be some people out there asking, like, why should Canonical be providing support for these games? And Valve has an answer for that. Quote, enabling the Steam client to run in pure 64-bit environments while feasible would leave the vast majority of the current Steam library inaccessible to such users without an additional compatibility layer. Proton and Wine, they're 32-bit. And most of the games that you own on Steam and in other libraries are 32-bit. Steam itself still relies on 32-bit software, so uh, it might be simple and it might be easy to say, well, publishers and developers just need to get on board with 64-bit applications, but really that's not how the world works. One of my biggest pet peeves about the Linux community has always been this, this forward, unflinching eye towards the future, without regard for the past at all. And honestly, for the most part, it's a good thing. I mean, it's a good thing to want to make progress and to make the changes that are necessary to build a better thing, to build a better Linux. And while progress is great, we also need to consider the actual costs. Linus Torvald's number one rule when it comes to Linux kernel development has always been we do not break user space. That's important because if a change to the kernel breaks an app on an end user system, that's a violation of his first rule. It, it, it is such a pain in the ass for the end user and it turns them off from ever wanting to use Linux again. If Ubuntu had carried forward with their plan and wholesale broken user space, I think that it would have been bad for the entire community. And I think that we as a community now are stronger than we ever have been after this debate. That's it for this video. If you believe in the work that I do, you can support this show with a monthly contribution over on Patreon, or you can pick up a t-shirt. There's a link in the description. But no matter what you do, whether you hit that like button or share this video with your friends, don't forget to subscribe to see more from me, the Linux Gamer. And as always, thanks for watching.